Hello, and welcome to my AP Human Geography Unit 1 Test Review. In this video, I'll be reviewing all the concepts that we have learned in, un in AP Human Geography Unit 1 in preparation for the upcoming test. First thing we talked about was the intro to geography. In AP Ge Human Geography, one important thing that we must do is understand the world and its patterns and how and do we see patterns developing around the world. And one methodology that we use to understand the world around us is what is there, why there, and why care. The words what and there are more of a descriptional based thing. In what you're giving a summary of the event that you want to understand about and in there you're explaining where it happened. But the terms why there and why care are more of an analysis type questions. These questions, such as why there, make you go more in depth in order to understand how these events happened and how they can affect you. Now let's talk about globalization. Globalization is an important concept when you're trying to answer the question, why care? When you're answering the question, why care, you have to not only take the factors that are involved with the event, you also have to look at how that event can impact you, even if it's halfway across the world. And when you're talking how different places in the world can impact each other, you are not talking about globalization. In globalization, you're talking about the interconnectedness of the world. An example of this is how people used to be localized in their own villages and tribes and wouldn't go more than a max 20 miles outside of their territory. Now, through various technologies, people, countries, economies, etc., things are becoming more interconnected. Also, globalization is increasing the interaction of people, and this includes the interaction between different people's ways of life and cultures, etc. Globalization has both positive and negative effects. Some positives include sharing ideas, cultures, and technologies. Some technologies include internet and various forms of communication, including the cell phone. Negatives are when ideas meet, they can sometimes create a culture clash. And some ideas that can create a culture clash are political ideas and religious ideas. Geographers. Geographers are essential when it comes to AP Human Geography. And how do they work? Geographers need to create a spatial perspective. And to do this, they need to know locations of things and events. They also explain why human events occur. And they need to be able to show how events are related. One important task of the geographer is to collect data. They put data into the spatial perspective, namely through the use of maps. And geographers also use databases. Some databases include the U.S. government, and from the U.S. government they can use the Census or the CIA World Factbook. Another database they could use is the United Nations, and a statistic that they may want to get from that is the world population. Another database is the World Health Organization. Geographers collect two different types of data, quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data is statistics, hard facts, and numbers, while qualitative data is interviews and opinions. Now, there are five themes of human geography. That is location, human environment interaction, region, place, and movement. Our first theme is location. And when you're talking about location, the big question you're asking yourself is, where is something located? There are two types of location, absolute location and relative location. And there are two ways to describe location, and that is through site and situation. Absolute location. This is a precise mathematical location that exists on Earth. It is measured using lines of latitude and longitude, imaginary lines placed onto the Earth by humans to aid in the finding of various locations. Let's talk about these individually. Latitude. Latitude are the lines that will run parallel to the equator. They are horizontal, and if you're having trouble remembering this, it can be remembered as latitude is latitude. It is 
it measures if something is north or south of the equator. Longitude is parallel to the prime meridian. Instead of running horizontal, it runs vertical. It measures if something is east or west of the prime meridian. The prime meridian measures zero degrees longitude and is located in Greenwich, England. In order to measure longitude and latitude, and latitude, you need to use a precise degree of measurement, and those are seconds, minutes, and degrees. If you look at that, um, those numbers written there, you can see 47 degrees, 15 minutes, and 58 seconds. There are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in a degree, and if you're writing it out, it would be written in that form. Next are time zones. There are 24 time zones, and they're correlated with lines of longitude. Every 15 degrees longitude, there will be a new time zone, with exception for country borders. One notable exception for country borders is China. If geographers just used the 24 lines of longitude, then China would have five different time zones running to it. But in order to make things more convenient for China, they made it so that the time zone kind of wrapped around China in order to make it easy for domestic trade and stuff like that within China. Now let's talk about relative location. Relative location, as you can already guess, is relative to its surroundings. It can change based on a few factors. And it can, and it can change with the person or the perspective. As an area changes, or as roads change, as new landmarks come, etc., the relative location can change as well. And is not at all precise. Well, absolute location is spot on and precise. Now let's go on to the ways we can describe location. The first way is sight. Sight is the internal, physical, and cultural ca characteristics in an area. It can include population, economic, events, etc. in a certain location. Now let's look at situation. Situation is similar to relative location in terms it as it describes it, things or events that are close by to your area, but it emphasizes the important of a location, importance of a location relative to the elements around it. So, if you're talking about situation, you wouldn't necessarily talk about the city itself. You would talk about how the lake that is five miles to the east of it and how that lake influences various aspects of the city. And as as I just said, it emphasizes how things around a location influence the location. Now let's go on to our second theme of geography, and that is human-environment interaction. And when you're talking about human-environment interaction, you talk about cultural ecology, which is a specific view in human geography that looks at the relationship between humans and the environment. This talks about how humans affect the environment, and some examples of this is natural resources, dams, logging for energy, pollution, etc. And you can also look at how does the environment affect humans. And this can be through climate, clothing, crops, house structure, etc. And, but, due to the increase in wealth and technology, the environment impacts people less and less. A great example of this is Phoenix, Arizona, and how it can use new cooling and preservation methods to store food and water. This makes Phoenix a thriving city, even though it is in the middle of a de desert, and if just a few decades ago would not be a, vi a viable city location. And now let's look at our third theme of human geography, which is region. Regions are used to classify information and organize the landscape, as humans, as you can see from latitude and longitude and other things, just love to organize all the data they have. And as I said, it is an organization tool and it, but it is not exact. There are three types of regions. There's the formal region, which is also known of as the un uniform region. There's a functional region, which is known as a nodal region. And finally, there's a perception region, which is also known as a vernacular region. Formal regions. A region tied to a physical or cultural characteristics. Characteristic. An example of this is the Appalachian mountain chain or the Sun Belt, which is organized by climate and uh, the Appalachian mountain chain is organized by, as you can tell, the mountain chain. Functional regions, or also known as nodal regions. Basically, a functional region is a region 
that is basically the area of influence of a particular node or a point of influence. A functional region is more likely to change than the formal region. Functional regions can overlap and decay as you get farther away from the point of influence. Example of a nodal region. Let's go back to that. So um, let me draw an, an example here. So say you have right there, you have a newspaper delivery store, or a delivery place, newspaper A. You could say its area of influence is this circle I've drawn here. And so as you get farther away, its area of influence will de its influence would decrease. And going back onto the part where we said that neural influence can overlap, you can also have newspaper distributor B. It can be over here, and as you can see, they overlap. And so that is to enforce the fact that nodal regions can overlap and to show you that as they get farther apart, their influence can decrease, and how nodal regions only exist because they have usually a man-made structure in the center as serving as a node or point of influence. So the last one is the perception or vernacular region. It is created by perception, as you can tell by the name. It is a region that is formed in the minds of people as they think about a particular place. It is the least exact of all the regions, as it varies from person to person or groups of people to people and how they perceive a place to place. It is based on opinion and is most likely to change as time goes on. One notable example of this is people's perception of the South. Every one has their has a different perception of what they think the South is, whether it be the climate that they think is the South, or the Civil War and the countries that fought as the Confederate States of America. People have different perception, and that is why the vernacular region is the least exact of all the regions. Our fourth theme of human geography is place. Place is unique to every place in the world. It is a combination of human attributes um, cultural and religious attributes, and physical attributes, such as physical features. It creates a sense of place that makes it unique from other locations on Earth. It is highly personal personalized from person to person. And our last theme of geography is movement. Movement is how and where things move within a given space. Some I examples of this are ideas and information, which are intangible objects, and goods and people, which are tangible objects. Another important factor in movement is spatial interactions. How spaces interact with each other, and how people from different spaces interact with each other. And the questions you ask for this is, how do places interact through movement? This shows, spatial interaction shows the impact of one place on another on the physical and cultural landscape. Another important topic is friction of distance, and this is how does distance play a role on one place's impact on another, and like I just said, how distance interfe interferes with interaction. If you go back to the nodal regions, the farther you get away from the node, the lesser the influence, and this directly ties into friction of distance. One thing with friction of distance is interaction is made easier over time through improved technology. And this leads us right into our next one, which is space-time compression. Space-time compression is increased connectivity due to increased technology. And some technologies are communication technology and transportation technology. Over time, the time it takes for goods, ideas, and people to cross distances through space decreases. As you can see, in the 1600s and 1700s, in order to cross the ocean, people had to use ships. But now, to, if you want to get from like Atlanta to Germany, it's only a simple flat five hour flight now that we have the technology of airplanes. Now, another main theme topic in movement is distance decay, which is pretty much the verb or the effect of friction of distance. And what this is, is the influence one area has over another over distance. And just like friction of distance, it plays a lesser, lesser role with improved technology. Now, another big concept within movement is diffusion. And there are two types of diffusion. There's relocation diffusion and expansion diffusion. 
Relocation diffusion is the physical movement of a person from one place to another.